everybody, it's your girl Naj and I am back with another video. And on this Thanksgiving day, I got a word for y'all about Thanksgiving. So if y'all want to know what I got to say, y'all know what to do. Stay tuned. Okay? <laughs> y'all so look the holidays can be rough we got thanksgiving everybody got on the got dressed up going to the living room y'all see i got my little my little what is it my little turquoise blouse on my little neck embellishment sitting up in the living room about to put my little stretchy pants on so i can eat but anyway after thanksgiving then you got christmas then you got uh new year's and this is the season where you know, you have these surprise engagements, you have gender reveals, you have baby announcements, all of these kinds of things going on. Yet us single people just be like, yeah, I don't know about all that. <laughs> but anyway, there is a method to the madness, y'all. Thanksgiving. And I started thinking about this last night. I'm like, Thanksgiving is a time where, yes, people are getting blessed in many different ways. And us single people seem like we just be on the back burner. Like, seem like sometimes I know, because I felt it last night, that sometimes just single people can sometimes feel forgotten about. But let me just tell you, my sisters, my brothers, God has not forgot about you. God still has plans for us. God still has blessings for us. We just got to make sure that we are saying what God is saying about us so that we don't fall into that trap of, oh, woe is me. I don't have this. I don't have that. My life is just like, no, the devil is a liar. We got to start saying if we're not already what God is saying about us. We just can't just keep reading these words and not taking it personal, taking it in, like digesting the food so that it gets down in the innards. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> y'all know when, it, when when these holidays come around, you got family members asking you, well, when you going to settle down? When you going to get married? When you going to have about five, six babies? Like, like we can have control over that. And the truth is we do not, but we know a God who is in control. And so again, in this season of Thanksgiving, we're going to start thanking God and blessing God for what he's already done. And then we're going to trust God for what he can do, the power that he has to make and shake things to work in our favor. No, we may not have the the uh the husband or the wife. No, we may not have the kids. No, you might not have your dream house, but guess what? Yes, my apartment might be a modest one, but guess what? The heat is on, the lights are on. When sis open up the refrigerator, sis got options. And guess what? If sis don't want that, I got a couple of coins in my account so that I can go and buy me something to eat. Like everybody ain't got that option. Then on top of that, I got when I go downstairs, I could, you know, hit my little doo doo. Get in my car and drive myself somewhere. So it's like, it's so many things to be thankful. Like, everybody ain't got that. Some people are living with people. Some people are still busting it. Like, whatever the situation is. But guess what? God is still good. Because I remember the days when I was catching the bus. I remember the days when I did not have a car. I remember the days when I wasn't with my mom. I didn't have my own place. But I thank God. Like, God has been good. I haven't always been good. I haven't always been pressing in. But I think I, in this season, God is really showing me, like, Notch, come on now. Get yourself together. Like, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do, but you got to do your part. And, and by the you, I'm talking about me. And all of us as the singles, like, we want these husbands and these wives and everything, but we got to really make sure that we're pressing into the Lord, not just for the stuff, but we're pressing because we know that he is a good God. You think about every blessing that you have experienced this year. Everybody ain't get the same blessing that you got. I don't know what they are, but you know. You just begin to thank God again for everything that you experienced. Think how he opened doors for you. How he made ways for you for providing for you that, you're, that you did not go without anything. It may not have been everything that you wanted, but your needs are met. And that is a blessing because there's so many people that's really going through rough times. And just because this one particular part of our lives is not, hasn't come to fruition yet, doesn't mean that all hope is lost. No, because that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to focus on that you don't have the husband, you don't have the wife, you don't have the kids, you don't have the dream house. But guess what? 
And they ain't trying to be all deep. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He ain't say worrying about your problems is your strength. Consist, bro. Worrying about stuff that you can't control is just going to zap you of your strength. You ain't going to have no joy. You ain't going to have no peace. You ain't going to have nothing because you're just going to be focused on everything that you don't have versus, God, I thank you for what you've allowed me to um to experience. God, I thank you that my lights are on. I thank you that I got clean running water. I thank you, Lord, that I got a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength because everybody ain't well. People made plans yesterday and aren't even here today to experience them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's put these things into perspective. Thanksgiving. Yes, God will bless us with things, but also we need to also be thankful for the spiritual gifts that the Lord is really downloading into us. Like, y'all, I just thank God for this season. Like, God is really showing me, like, what's really important. Because the stuff that I used to think that was important, not. My relationship with Christ is my number one priority. And like I said, when the enemy want to come and try to shake my mind, it's, no, the devil is, no, you can't have my mind. No, you can't have my hope. My hope is in the Lord. He said he has plans to bless me and to prosper me. All I got to do is stay planted in the word. All I got to do is stay, is just stay focused, stay connected to the true vine. Because there's so many other things that I, we can connect ourselves to. But it if it ain't of Christ, like, get rid of them attachments. Like, uh-uh. <laughs> and I got two scriptures for y'all. One is from Psalms 26 and 7. Like, again, spirit of thanksgiving, thanking God for everything. Thank God for everything. Count your blessings up. And we won't have time to complain about what we don't have. All right? And again, this scripture is... Oh, and by the way, get out your Bible because we finna read. Okay? <laughs> All right. Psalm 26, verse 7. That I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. And they say that you may proclaim for me. No, per, this is personal. That I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving. Not the voice of sorrow. Not the voice of defeat. Not the voice of, oh, well, God, you said you ain't do No. With the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. So when the enemy start trying to tell you about this and this and that, no. That I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. So no. I'm going to start thanking God for everything that he's done all, and they're all wonderful. Everything that God does, he does it well, and it's for our good. No, everything that we go through don't feel good, but the word says, I believe it's Romans 8 and 20, and so he's going to cause all things to work for our good. Let me just turn, because this is the second part to that, and I don't want to misquote it. So let me just um, get that together real quick. <laughs> Romans 8 and 28. And it's, oh, yes. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Even our singleness is going to work for our good. One day we're going to tell the story about how, you know, we endured, how, you know, the Lord kept us and, you know, how the Lord is a keeper. And we could just, you know, just again, stay connected to the Lord to see the bigger picture here. Somebody somewhere is going to need to hear your testimony of how you made it through because I get it. Singleness is not easy, but God is a keeper. In verse 29 and 30, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. So thank God to be in the image of him. So we're not going to look like the world. Well, at least we ain't supposed to. We're supposed to be trying to allow the Lord to really just work on us and to prune us so that we can look more like him. Okay. And my last scripture, because y'all, that wasn't even in my notes to um, say, but God knows why. You know, he took me there. All right. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And the word says, 
Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So that means we don't have to get antsy. We don't have to get anxious about anything because it says be anxious for nothing. Like God knows the time. And then people be like, oh, well, you know, well, your biological clock is ticking. Um, You know, you're getting older. How are you going to have kids? Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. God, you made these ovaries. You made these organs. <laughs> you know what they can withstand. You know what they can endure. You know how old I am. You know how old I'm getting. So I ain't got to be anxious. I ain't got to go outside the will of God to go and try to have somebody's baby. Like, no, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And then verse seven reads, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So this peace that we have, and my pastor actually talked about this on Sunday. It ain't going to make sense to people who don't understand or either people who don't even want to understand. But that peace is going to be for you. It's going to help help guard your heart. So you don't start to take in, oh, well, yeah, you know, I am getting older. Well, let me call up my ex. The devil is a liar. No. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We don't have to take, we don't have to take situations into our own hands. We can continue to trust God believe God and the, the promise keeper that we sing about. He is that the way maker that we sing about. He is that the peacemaker that we sing about. He is that. So, I mean, he's going to guard our hearts and our minds. So anything pertaining to us believers, anything pertaining to us, God's got it. As I close this video, as we enter in this season of Thanksgiving, we got so much stuff to be thankful for. And don't let people uh, put their insecurities off on you. Yes, the reality is you may be getting older. Yes, the reality is you may not be married. But again, we know who holds tomorrow. And in, again, in the season of Thanksgiving, we're not going to allow the enemy to use these people to get into our heads and make us think that God has forgot. God has not forgot. You continue to trust God, continue to believe God, and continue to incline your ear to what God says and rebuke anything that you know that is not of God. So that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. God bless you all, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.